God knows we're happy to be here today. Good morning to you. It's 21 minutes now past the hour of 6 o'clock. My name is Richard B. in the building. D. Jordan in the building, yeah? We're here. What's up? I want to hear. I want to hear Kevin. Kevin, where's your microphone? <laughs> <laughs> Kevin is also in the building. We've got you, Bridge Nation, across Jamaica and around the world, locked in as per usual, so that we can uh, make some fun times happen right here on top of the bridge up and go. Today being a Thursday, and uh, I, I opened the show with uh, as a broken-hearted man, as the reggae boys lost. Love three to Mexico last night. I, 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 you know what? Let me tell you, Richie, why I'm glad this morning because I, I didn't see. You didn't see totally never watch Oh, oh okay. So, wow. Okay. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was one of the matches, man. We they scored early, and um, the pressure was always on. And uh, it was love three to Mexico, who will advance in the Gold Cup. While we have to sort of lick our wounds and uh, regroup and uh, plan for something else. And it's now time for WTF. What the fact? Where are we going this morning? Let me tell you. We're looking at lemurs. Ringtail lemurs. And the headline says they outstink each other. What? Ringtail lemurs have one of the most unique conflict resolution tactics of all animals, stink fights. Since lemurs live in large social groups of 20 to 30, breeding season can bring a lot of competition. And so male ringtails have scent glands on their wrists and shoulders. The wrist gland produces a volatile, short-lived odor while the shoulder gland produces a brown toothpaste-like substance which is much longer lasting. Basically, male lemurs wave their tails and waft a fragrance toward their rivals resulting in a smelly standoff until someone backs off. What a fight. So, so the lemurs, they they drop some stink bombs, what a and uh, that is seen as a repellent. <laughs> <laughs> Richie, yeah, the wonders of of, of nature, know, man. I tell you. Let me tell you, you don't want to be anywhere near the, near no. the fight. They don't. No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. I'm th- I'm saying thank God we don't have lemurs in Jamaica. Yeah, that's what they do. They outstink each other, and that is a fact. The kind that we <laughs> there, <laughs> there it is. Um, looks like a cute animal from this distance, but it doesn't look like one that we want to get close to, especially when they're involved in a fight, because they drop some stink bombs. All right, it's 29 hours past the hour of six o'clock. That was WTF. What the fact? It's now time for us to take a look at our proverb of the day. And uh, the proverb of the day is what you're going to hear right now. Rain a fall, dirty tough. Say that again. Rain a fall, dirty tough. Okay, rain a fall, but dirty tough. Do you know what that proverb means? Check your thoughts against this answer, this meaning. When you hear the proverb, rain a fall but dirty tough, the official meaning is, income is unable to cover expenses. Hence, rain a fall (laughs) but dirty tough. (laughs) Yeah, all right, that is what that means. Your income is unable to cover your expenses. How many people have that problem uh, these days? I suspect many persons have that problem. (laughs) Yeah, and um, that is what it means. So if you hear people using that term, that proverb, that's what they're going through. They have more expenses than their income can cover. And that is not a, that's always a spot of bother. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big thing. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Know all about that. Yeah. After suffering a 15-month pandemic shutdown, 
the cruise industry is now about to make a big, big bounce back in a bigger way than before. Next year, it is projected that some 36 million people are expected to vacation at sea compared to 29.7 million in 2019. And that is information that we gleaned from uh, the Cruise Line Inter International Association. So next year is going to be a big year for cru the cruise shipping industry. Well, alongside that bit of information, we can also tell you that the world's biggest cruise ship is coming soon. And I'm telling you, this is going to be huge. Here are some, uh, some facts about this uh, cruise ship. It is longer than the Eiffel Tower is tall. It is Royal Caribbean's icon of the seas. <laughs> it has been described by one journalist as a pimp my ride fever dream that has just now recently passed its first sea trials. So, the trials have been done and it's ready to set sail. Some more about the, the icon of the seas from Royal Caribbean. Well, it's got 20 decks, more than 40 venues for whining and dining. On the icon of the seas, you'll find an ice rink plus a 55-foot waterfall. Menadon yet? It's got nine whirlpools and even an open air central park and guess what in that park it's real foliage that is actually um on display really? yeah That's you. This no, no, there's nothing normal about this so if you want to make a comparison in terms of size with say the titanic which uh did come out with a bang back in the day well this new ship called the icon of the seas is actually Five times larger, larger than the Titanic. Wow. Yes, sir. And believe it or not, there are a lot of eager people who are waiting to get on board. It's going to set sail on uh, in January uh, of 2024. And I can tell you this morning that all, like all of the 5,610 passenger spots on the Icon's inaugural journey, have been sold out already and persons who are going to be setting sail would have been set back by an amount of fifteen hundred and thirty seven dollars u.s right. for that journey well, I mean, I could do a <laughs> uh, times five grand <laughs> yo it's a lot of money times it's a lot of money times money spending on mm -hmm. the ship yes sir seven what? nights on the on the icon of the seas, um, it looks like it's going to be about Let's fifteen hundred and thirty-seven U.S. dollars. All of the cabins have been sold out already. That 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 is a uh, Richie. That's a monstrosity. Huge. Listen, five thousand people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Can you imagine? No man, that's not normal. That's a listen. Uh, it's a <laughs> yeah, lot of people it's, to it's be on. It's a hell of a ship, yeah. bro. Mm -hmm. I'd love to know what it costs to to build a ship like this. And whatever it is in U.S. dollars, I will not try to convert it in my calculator because well, I don't think my calculator can hold that figure. Well, you want to yeah. you want to find out uh, what it costs to build that ship. <laughs> All right. You know, I am on the technical side. Right. I want to know what runs that ship. <laughs> <laughs> Must be a 22-cylinder. A, a lot of power. Yo, a whole player. lot of power. <laughs> and no doubt some backup power as well. well listen for move that. Well, one thing I'd say is that we hope that it doesn't suffer the same kind of fate as the Titanic oh, no. did. And it's unlikely to, especially in our Caribbean waters. <laughs> yeah, we hope and we pray that there'll be no issues along those lines. But uh, that is something that is definitely going to be looked... A lot of people are looking forward to. And uh, hopefully it gets a chance to stop at one of our ports. Yeah. Because if, if we get the icon of the seas... Um, uh, Minister Ed Bartlett and the Min Minister of Tourism and uh, big thing. Uh, everybody will be the entire yeah. country will be smiling I, all the way <laughs> I, to, to the bank. Let me tell you. Yeah, I would definitely go drive um, just to get a pick of that. You gotta take a drive down to, to yeah, Falmouth or Wichita yeah, or Mobile. Yeah, go take a look. Yeah, yeah, man. man. That, that, 
that, huge. that is like a, li- a, a, a little mini island moving on 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 the ocean on the, on the seas. Enough. Yeah, man. Yeah, What's man. Big? Look out for it then. The icon of the seas, uh, courtesy of Royal Car- Caribbean, and it sets sail next January. All right. Uh, information you can use as we inform, we educate, and we entertain. I don't know if Robo Ranks heard the rumor yesterday as it came out, but uh, Supercat is alive. Mr. Mirage, good morning. Good morning, Robo Ranks. Good afternoon, actually. Yeah, and good, and good morning, Supercat. He is alive and kicking, as, as he would say in his own inevitable way. I am a living, 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 living legend. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the legend is alive. The legend is alive. Yeah, it's man. amazing how, um, how rumors fly around the... the, the space the internet space so rapid yeah um and nothing i mean death to say someone's died and like you see a post and a picture of super cat i mean mm-hmm. i saw it on twitter um and i was like what where did that come from yeah all of a sudden people people um people do these things though because they have no basis for doing it and they just come up with these crazy old stuff there there are some artists a few of them i won't name them right now but they have suffered at, um, at, at those um, individuals who do those crazy things over a period of time. Like several times, uh, you might have heard it as well, Robo, where um, some artist names have been popping up on the internet mm. that they have passed. It's almost like they're being targeted. People should stop it, man. And, and the time it took for the person to make the post, like to actually make the, uh, create the video, the, post, and, yeah. the mm-hmm. video and mm-hmm. editing it, I'm like... If you just spend the time and make a one phone call, maybe just one, exactly. like Lizzie said, just one phone yeah. call, you might have got your your story right. But um, yeah, the internet is um, it is a place that um, it, it, it as they say, it's the devil's playground, my brother. It's the yeah. devil's playground. Sure. Some good, some bad. But guess what? The internet is connecting us today. Shush, Robo, don't tell them the whole story. Don't tell them the whole story. It's connecting us right now. We are on the beat one hundred three six in London, and of course, Richie B is in Jamaica. Listen, when you're watching through the app, through the internet. People, he's not in the same building with us. We are <laughs> simulcasted across London and Jamaica. And I, I must say, Richie, yes, I want to push for more of our um, listeners and audience to get involved in things where we can cross-pollinate and talk about where uh, London and Jamaica is concerned. So if you have something that you want to bring to uh, London right here on the beat, and of course, if you have something that you want to bring to Jamaica on the, the Bridge 99, do so get involved in the show bro yeah most deaf most deaf please um allow me to say hello to one of uh, our listener right now who is in in um in essex tuning in and playing us very very loud i'm oh, understanding yeah essex uh, the only way <laughs> there you go um you know more th- about it than i do <laughs> i'll take yeah, care of your I word mean, listen people i'm not i'm not i don't, don't want to lose anybody from essex i want to know if it's forward come 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 <laughs> but essex is a place where they would class people from Essex as bougie uptown, but sideways uptown. They're not really up, but um, when you kind of made your money and you lived in East London all the time, you'd move to the county outside of uh, the east of London, and it's called Essex. And there's a famous program, Richie, called The Only Way is Essex. 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 In an elephant man style. And <laughs> that program is binge binge watch by millions and wow. characters that's come from that program of like you know it's like a fly on the wall characters that come from that program has become like multi multi millionaire um uh a bit like the the housewives of atlanta but, mm. you know england like, yeah, well i will atlanta i will have to, i'll have to have conversations with um um uh, J- uh janice and 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 other others of her family to find out uh, if that is the reason why they have found themselves living in essex right now <laughs> well, they said them, them, them uptown sideways. Yes, yeah. yes. Bougie, bougie. I'm going to have to find out more about that. All it is right. a, it is a, it's a funny time. And they all speak in a Cockney accent, so they've taken their Cockney with them. So it's strange because you see people riding around in, in Lambos and rollers and um, these Ferraris and the biggest luxurious cars, and they still sound like they're from, That's uptown. Yeah. Well, well they're uptown. the uptown. I call it uptown sideways, but... Good morning, people of Essex. 
Good morning. <laughs> yeah. I'll beat them. Smiley face. Oh, I'm getting oh. <laughs> yeah, they're all right. They're all right. And they're doing good. Um, the, the BBC guy uh, has been in the news. I saw something this morning that he has been hospitalized and, um, and that uh, his identity has now become known and that he's going through some mental kind of trauma. His wife put out a statement on his behalf and for, on, the, on the family's behalf saying uh, she wants to... Is that what you to... call it? Put out a statement? His wife put him out? <laughs> <laughs> just, just get, she didn't no, say let me that. Not let me not, let me not laugh. No, he was revealed, and yeah. when the day, when the day, obviously the day I spoke to you, I knew who it was, but oh. because of uh, friends that work still at the BBC, mm-hmm. and and I must say, I'll say this as a as a as a person, he's one of the nicest people that I met when I used to walk into the the BBC building because mm-hmm. the newsroom was downstairs, and he did the evening news. And in the evening, you see him coming in and out, and he was one of the most polite, very polite, always engaging. You, you know, walk into a lift and he's there and, you know, was really engaging. And um, I always make mention of him, like, when I see him on the news, I say, see that person? He was never mm-hmm. up his own, you know? He's one of those people that would would smile and laugh with anybody in the you're, building. You're talking about Mr. Hugh Edwards, Hugh right? Hugh Edwards, yeah, yeah Hugh yeah. Edwards. Um, and I, I, I've always said that. And then when I hear, when I heard it was him, I was... I was you were surprised. Kind of surprised, yeah. yeah that, um, and now that there's, I mean, the, the the story is a non-story because the police didn't get involved and it seems like they were, as you would say, consenting adults. But the problem now has, it's just ripped off, ripped off the plaster and there's mm-hmm. people now in the building. Two more people who work for the BBC has said that they've been approached by him in, in not so uh, tasteful ways. And mm. those stories are now emerging. So that's really, wow. really what reason what could be one of the reasons why he's checked into uh, the good the hospital. Yeah, I actually yeah. thought his wife was being very kind to him when I saw the report saying that uh, she's putting out a statement because he's not in uh, in, a, in a position really to, to, yeah, to, to speak so. as such. And, um, and, and she basically said she's speaking on behalf of the family that he's dealing with the, the mental uh, challenges that he's having. Um, mm. and uh, and praying for his speedy recovery. But you seem to have more information as to where he might yeah. go when he leaves hospital. <laughs> well, I mean, he's not been he's not been um he's not been terminated from his from contract. His job. And he was on a he was on a contract of around half a million pounds a year. Oh wow. But he's the face of the news. So mm-hmm. he's the anchor person of the the news. So he's he has a very important role. He's overseen wars. He's been the person at six o'clock to say Ahem. X amount of people died of Corona. He was the one that mentioned um, the death of the Queen. So in terms of UK, mm-hmm. he's a significant character. Without him on that news, sometimes people are like, I don't believe the news. Wait until uh, Hugh. If you say it's true. Because, uh, uh, you know, it's Hugh, it's Hugh true. Yeah. So if you say it, it's true. Hugh, Hugh, so, Hugh, is, Hugh uh, is obviously huge. Yes, it's huge. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's do a time check right now and come back with a conversation. What time is it? <laughs> Richie, Richie, I, I really, you know, you are you're, you're a legend, man. But you you you're really trashing us as as presenters with your with your commentary. It's, uh, but it's amazing. Thank That's you, why you man. are the legend you are. Yeah, Hugh is Hugh is huge. <laughs> but um yeah it's a it's a it's a situation that um that happens up and down the country in many situations many workforces workplaces where somebody has a has a huge um pull on a on on a company and because he's that big or he or she is that big when trouble when trouble reached the foot it, it's not like dealt with in the right way and knowing that the person was um, the story came out and it took seven weeks mm-hmm. for anybody in the building to approach Hugh, the huge one. And yeah. say, Hugh, <laughs> I know you're true, but, you know, it, it's crazy. So yeah. heads heads will roll. Yeah. Heads will roll. And, and for persons and so who are not, not familiar with the backstory, um, it is believed that he solicited um, from a very young lady, I think 17 years of age, um, yes. uh, sexually explicit uh, photographs. And, mm-hmm. uh, and 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 seems to have uh, actually what well, they shared photographs it seems or something right and Hugh Hugh is sixty one years yeah old. yeah that should be noted all right um, well we hope that he gets back to good health and like we said um, it's not a pol- it's uh, the police say it's n- there's no case for him to answer so it's just for him to put his life back in order and uh, to reconcile I suspect with those that might be hurt by that situation yes. hundred one hundred yes 100. sir. 
All right. Well, other, other, go ahead, bro. I, I was about to say, other than, other than that, um, everything is is um, chirpy here in the UK. I, I stepped out uh, to pick up my bag to, when I was walking into the studio. I left it in the car. Um, came in and I said, "Damn, I didn't go for my bag." And I went back outside, and it was the torrential rain. Mm. So I'm soaked, like just soaked, absolutely oh, really? soaked. It wow! Literally in seconds, it just came down like. Pew. Gosh, like um, some yeah, London like, afternoon, uh, maybe some convectional showers or something. I don't know. Yeah, it's one mm. of them ones. It's one of them ones. All right. So uh, I was listening to the Secret Sound game before I drop some songs. Mm-hmm. I, I I want to put in my bid. Okay. As them say, me dibs, me dibs. All right. I think the bubble. Yes. Uh, you said bubble and what is it? Pub, bubble and um, the, the, the blowing. bubble and blowing, blowing, blowing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like Jody. Is on the back of a vehicle which is blowing fast <laughs> and she had bubble to one song or something like that. That's why I think it is. I think she's on a, a motorbike. Okay. No? She's not here, so she she's just maybe cracking up right now wherever she is. Yeah, Jody's blowing on a, the bike I blow and she's on the back and she's got the, the uh, her her phone in the bag. And she'll bubble to one song. I reckon she's bubbling. Do, to do you have a suggestion as to which song yes, it might be? Yes, yeah, most okay, definitely. Then. Rubber Ranks, making them know. Rubber Ranks Radio, keep it locked. Yeah. Now, Campion College Dance Society, one of Jamaica's leading high school dance troops, will be will take its critically acclaimed production, Roots, to South Florida and New York between August 1 and 16 this year. The production, Roots, is endorsed by the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport as one of the official events of the country's 61st independence celebrations. And we understand the production was inten- uh, intentionally curated to bring every aspect of Jamaica to the diaspora in the United States. The presentation is a beautiful mix of Afro-Caribbean folk form fused with stylized modern contemporary undertones unique to Jamaica. This morning to tell us more uh, is artistic director for the Campion College Dance Society, Mr. Dwight Wright, to share more about this upcoming production. Good morning, Mr. Uh, Mr. Wright. Good morning to you and himself. Thanks Good morning. Good, <laughs> Good to have you on the program. Um, is your first name spelled D.W.? R I G H E. Yes, yes, the right, right. Oh, yeah, that's the right. Just a D to the last name. Yeah. <laughs> All right, got you. All right, so uh, we're happy to have you in the program, and congratulations on what you're doing with uh, this uh, dance society. Um, now you're conquering not just Jamaica but uh, the diaspora as well. How excited are you about these upcoming uh, stagings in places like Florida and New York? Oh Lord, excitement is an um, an understatement as to. <laughs> how I'm feeling about just the achievement of um, the Campion College Dance Society and, and also just, you know, a proud moment for Jamaica. I mean, when you think about all, all that is happening, you know, Jamaica and stuff, I mean, we do have a lot of things that we can feel proud about, but we know that there are just some of those nuances um, with our society that, you know, paints us in a negative light. And here we are, as we're about to celebrate 61 years of independence, we have a group of young Jamaicans, mm-hmm. you know, um, taking the arts, in this case, dance, um, to major metropolitan areas, you know, talking about South Florida, downtown Fort Lauderdale, you know, um, and to the Bronx in New York City. Mm-hmm. I couldn't feel more proud of the group. I'm actually excited too for Campion College and very excited for um, Jamaica. Indeed. Um, how many um, a persons comprise, students comprise this group? Yeah, so we, we have a total of 35 students and the, the troupe um, is divided. We have our intermediate dancers, which will be our younger dancers spanning from first form to uh, fourth form. And then we have our senior troupe um, or, you know, our young adults, um, you know, between the, um, fifth form and sixth form. Mm-hmm. And we also have an alumni program where immediate past students of Campion who are now at university doing their first degree because of their love for dance and just the, 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 the family 
nature of the dance society you know they have agreed to come back and to help with the transition process so we do have you know a wide procession of age and and, and also talent I, I, I mentioned earlier that Roots represents uh, every aspect of Jamaica. Um, give us some more details on that and uh, take us to the inspiration behind this production. Yes, so, so the production Roots was created in um, for Jamaica 55 because actually we brought aspects of this production to New York in 2018. We were at the York College Performing Arts um, Center in Queens we were invited to be a part of their, you know, their their summer series, their spring summer series. And so what I wanted to do in, 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 in 2017 was to highlight the achievements, as I mentioned, of Jamaica, but also some of the struggles and the social issues. So when the production was created, um, you know, I challenged my choreographer, um, myself choreograph on the on the show, um, to create dances that are representative as to what is happening in jamaica so for example one of the the most treasured pieces of the the the, the, the repertoire on roots is a dance called in or lane mm -hmm. so in or lane um it's a very very intense modern epic modern choreography done by Rene mcdonald mm -hmm. who is a past student of champion and and i want to add that Rene actually choreographed on alvin ailey and that mm -hmm. piece is was in tribute to our athletes and i know we're coming up to world championship and so i know that the audience will love it mm -hmm. the, the the costume for that piece the dancers are clad in the jamaican track body suits wow. and it's the, the, the dance is almost like a race and it speaks to just the sheer determination the prowess the strength mm -hmm. the dominance of jamaica on the track mm -hmm. so that is something that the diaspora will love it is a crowd pleaser it ends the first half of the show also in the first half richie i want to mention about misogyny yes that dance speaks to um i cover the issues of violence against women and children in 2017 i don't know if you remember when they were just you know just this brutal attack against women and children i wanted to put it on the stage and i tell you richie that is a very powerful dance it's a narrative piece it's about 14 minutes in length and it reaches to the soul um, I've had members of the audience at the end of the intermission or the end of the show come to me to tell me that they were crying in the piece because it brings back some tearful memories and stuff. And they were happy that we're able to kind of put that on the stage to remind um, us as Jamaicans, to remind members of the diaspora that even though we have had all of these achievements since independence, there is still a lot of work to be done. And that's where roots come from. So mm -hmm. we talk about every aspect of Jamaican culture. We're not going to pretty it up in the production. You're going to enjoy it, but there are going to be some moments where you have to think and, you know, just to reflect on where we are going as a country, as a nation. Yeah, yeah. This sounds like a lot of work was put into creating uh, the, these pieces, and um, no doubt you'll continue to get rave reviews for it because you, you have such a wide gamut that you're covering. I mean, you have the mix of the Afro-Caribbean folk form, and you're coming right up to the contemporary um, techniques uh, in, in dance. Uh, how long is the production, by the way, from start to finish? Yeah, it's a standard two-hour production, okay. you know, with a 15-minute intermission. So, you know, you have the first half, a 15-minute intermission, then the second half. So it's pretty much standard. Mm -hmm. And uh, you mentioned about the variety yes. um, on Showcase. So so if you, you're you in the diaspora, right, you're, you are in the States, you have never been to Jamaica, you're, you're, you're a Floridian, you're a New Yorker, um, you have, you, you, your, your parents are Jamaican, but you have never been to Jamaica. This is an opportunity um to experience jamaica in your backyard as we mentioned so we are bringing jamaica to the places so you'll find that some of the dances that um the the, the genre dance that we have we have like the kumina you're going to be seeing experience kumina we, we are bringing some of our revival pieces um and as you mentioned we, we we can't leave out the dance hall there is a the production actually ends with a dance drama um called jamaica love and Jamaica Love explore the dance hall um, setting, the dance hall space. Mm -hmm. You will see a little bit of the political tribalization coming into play. Okay. But in the end, we are all Jamaican. So regardless of which color you're associated with, <laughs> you know, we are all Jamaican. And so the, 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 the audience will be able to experience our eclectic um, a static dancehall culture, dancehall movement, um, uniquely choreographed 
and with a storyline running between start to finish, yes. right? And as the name suggests, Jamaica Love. So, um, Richie, it's a beautiful production. The colors, the lighting. Uh, we have invested heavily in the technical aspect of the production to transport um, the audience. So you you will actually forget that you're in a theater. You will feel like you're on the island. Wow, wow. Uh, many persons are listening in the diaspora, and uh, maybe before you go, you can just remind us of where you'll be at and uh, maybe the dates if you have them and so on. But I wanted to ask you, um, how, how, how good a feeling is it that uh, this collab, this um, this production is um, is actually endorsed by the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment, and Sport. And how important do you take this endorsement? Oh, we. I mean, uh, when I started Campion, I actually started teaching at Campion as an economics teacher. I mean, that's that was my core function, right? Um, in two thousand and nine. And I, I, I was at the school. Um, I mean, I've been associated with the arts from St. Catherine High School, where, you know, that's my alma mater, okay. where I learned most of the, you know, artistic um, skills that I have now. And I, I wanted to start the dance group. And so we started in 2009 entering JCDC. And in 2015, I think, I said to myself, no, I want to take this to a different level. I mean, I was happy for the exposure for J, at, J, at JCDC, but I wanted to bring a more professional um, um, program to Campion. And so you find that even though these are, are high school dancers, they are professionally trained. I mean, when people come and watch them, they are in awe as to whether these are really high school students. So we're talking about the caliber that mimics that of professional companies locally, um, you know, like your NDTC or CDT or CADCO. That's the caliber of dancing that people should come to expect, right? Mm -hmm. So do not think that because they're high school, they're just going to come and run across the stage. We're talking about serious um, dancing. And so when the ministry come and endorse, we have had the minister attended our shows. I mean, she's a, a big supporter of the program and when she, she came to the program she was like oh no you know this is something very very special so the endorsement mm -hmm. didn't come as a surprise you understand but at the same time we took um pride you know that you know our school campion mm -hmm. known for his academic prowess and stuff right. is now on a different scale at a different level and so um you, you asked me about in terms of you know the work and stuff our sponsors we have mm -hmm. to give you know um acknowledgement to the chase fund jamaica observer wow. tourism enhancement fund guardian group vm golden cross mail pack and also visit lauderdale mm -hmm. you know they have really come on board to help us because uh, richard i will also want to mention that you know we are still trying to raise funds because as you can see it's a two-legged tour mm -hmm. florida and new york you know as an economist i can tell you about the exchange rate <laughs> and how you know it makes it and, and, the, and not to talk about the inflation, right? right? And right. so we are still in need of that support and we're inviting members to contribute to our GoFundMe page or you can just call the school. Um, I'm sure you'll ask me for information where people can mm -hmm. um, contribute. But yes. Yes, so you, can, you, can, about, you can just tell us that right now as a matter of fact. Yeah, so if you if you want to contribute um, towards, and I think what where we're at now, we're really looking for transportation to help with our accommodation and even the welfare aspect, food and stuff, because it's a lot of students that you know, teenagers eat enough. For anybody who <laughs> have teenagers at their home, you know that your grocery bill my, is my, ridiculous. My lips are sealed. Go ahead, go ahead, Edward. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so, you know, so so we have the GoFundMe, so wherever you are, I mean, I, I, I know you reach the diaspora far and wide, so if you're in the UK, you can just log, go to GoFundMe, search Campion College, Dance Society, search Roots, and you can make your contribution. You're in the States, wherever you are in Jamaica, you can, that's the easiest way to make contribution. And if you want to make a sizable donation, uh, and by the way, with the GoFundMe, you know, there's tax write-off, you know, so for person who really want to make a serious contribution, you can do so. But you can also um, email, we have, a, we have an official email for the Roots um, tour, so that's rootsja2023 at gmail.com. That's rootsja2023 at gmail.com. So you can, you know, send an email to us. And for those who are here, companies and stuff, you can call Campion College and to tell them that you want to make a contribution because this is a Jamaica thing. Uh, yes, it's headlined by a champion, but I think 
it's something that Jamaica, and which I want to mention, when I work with the theater in Fort Lauderdale, Parker Playhouse yeah. in downtown Fort Lauderdale, that's where the show will be at, and at the Lehman Center of the Performing Arts in the Bronx at mm -hmm. Lehman College. Okay. When I showed them the reel of the production, uh, the, the, the executive director at Lehman said to me, listen, I don't want to see anymore. She just she was ten oh. seconds in, and she said she that impressive. She was that impressed. Yeah. She said to me, "I can pick up talent, and I can pick up a good show mm -hmm. um, in a wimp." And I tell you, I just needed ten seconds, and I want you in my biggest theatre here on um, Lehman College. Sounds so we are great. looking for Jamaicans to help us to you know fill the theatre spaces and stuff. Wonderful stuff. Um, you wear the hat of an economics teacher at one stage. You wore that hat. I don't know if you still wear it. You are currently wearing the the the, uh, the um the hat of artistic director uh, for the Campion College Dance Society. And I'm going to add one to that. Great salesman as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, it was it's great a, talking with you. <laughs> yeah, and Richard, we didn't mention about the dates of the show. You yes, know, please um, go ahead and tell me that before we close. Yes. <laughs> yes, so um, it, the, in Fort Lauderdale, the show will be on August 5th and 6th, so that is the Independence Weekend. Um, so that, that that's all the reason to come out. August 5th and 6th at the Parker Playhouse in downtown Fort Lauderdale. Then we fly to New York. Um, we're going to be doing a performance for Goldman Sachs in Manhattan. Uh, we are doing a lunch hour show for them. And then the Roots show will be on August 12th and 13th at the Lehman Center. So those are the four days, August 5th and 6th in Fort Lauderdale, and then August 12th and 13th um, at the Lehman Center in the Bronx. Hats off, hats off to you and to every member of this, um, this um, of course, this uh, society, dance society that is heading out and not just representing for themselves and their families, but also for their country. May everything go well and uh, continue to soar. Thank you so very much, Dwight, and uh, all the best to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Richard. All right. Talking there with Dwight Dr Dr Wright. Yeah, it's a unique uh, spelling. First name spelled D-W-R-I-G-H-T. Uh, so it's Dwight Wright. And he's the artistic director for the Campion College Dance Society uh, who are heading out to represent uh, in Fort Lauderdale and also in New York. Um, did, I, did I tell you about the, the counselor? who was uh, speaking at a graduation ceremony and uh, his a clip of his uh, presentation has gone viral. I didn't tell you about that? No. Oh, wow. That's you good. need to hear about um, a gentleman by the name of Steve Graham. Well, uh, he made an appearance at a graduation ceremony recently and he spoke at the, at the uh, from the stage behind the podium. Um, and I'm reading now that based on reactions uh, to his presentation, uh, his wife apparently is quite upset that um, people are reacting the way they are, and uh, she says she feels unhappy um, about the reactions coming in, and uh, she basically would really recommend to her husband that he walks away from politics if this is what they have to go through. I don't, I don't know why people are making such a big thing about uh, uh, Steve's uh, presentation. Uh, sounded quite honest. Sounded a. Uh, uh, like a reasonable man who had his thoughts together and uh, maybe it has to do with his delivery I'm not even too certain but people are talking a lot about what he had to say or how he said what he had to say listen to this and tell me what are your thoughts on it Old Arbor School Leaving Ceremony 2023 message from the chairman Principal Mr. Good guest speaker Dr. Kassin Choup representative from the Ministry of Education, youth and distinguished guests, graduates, ladies and gentlemen. This is what should be. Good morning. I, Steve Graham, council nominee on the Old Arbor Primary Board of Management, I represent Mr. Ramon Fisher, who is unavailable, unavailable absent. I happy for this opportunity to greet you today at the 2023 graduation at this school of excellence. Graduation is a milestone of all levels. For the reason I feel truly honored to be here at all wonderful occasion 
annual graduation ceremony at the Old Arbor Primary School Institute of Excellence. It is great joy I am here today to assure you all graduates that I know you face a rough task throughout your preparation, your primary school year, especially during the pandemic, pandemic and with all the preparation for PEP. But I have no doubt the series of scare events you encounter endure during the period of period has only made you stronger and more resilient for the road ahead. Online learning may have robbed you of many opportunities. You would have had socialized, build relationships, and rapport with the teachers of your peers. However, that did not stop you from being amazing student, putting in the necessary And that was Councillor Steve Graham as he made an appearance at a graduation ceremony recently. No Using words can show to deliver his message. 